There's a thunderstorm going on today. A lot of rain, but that didn't stop me from mining. Yeah, so I just found another um, hexagonal, partial hexagonal action sapphire down to the river bend. And uh, so let's take a look at some of the other sapphires I found over. Yeah, let me get another shot. And, yeah, I'm soaking wet. <laughs> Got, you know, branches and dirt on my foot. Yeah, but. So you can see the colors. You can basically use this like a glass. And um, it's not glass because it's got grooves on the surface and oxidation. Maybe not even oxidation. It might be partially yellow. But it's the same hexagonal habit. And it's got just a lot of details on it. So it looks like there's a vein of clear sapphires under this house, which kind of makes sense. Um, that's dried river material. I go over that with a UV light because it lets you know where rubies are or sapphires that contain chromium. But yeah, here's today's find pile. And oh, as you can see, there's other examples of whatever it was I found today, but um, sapphire, you can tell it because it's got weight to it and it's usually got like a, a sheen to a face of it. Silimonite and sapphire differentiation can be a struggle sometimes, but you can use specific gravity tests and you can also use a spectrometer. But let me put this down. Wow, and see what I meant about the surface patterns? It's got surface patterns like oxidation, like, and wow. It's got the striations which corundum usually has too. I'm very stoked about that. So the thing is, sapphires usually have a hexagonal shape or a half hex shape. That's like kind of their little trait they have a lot of times. And here's a good example. This is opaque and kind of not very rocky, but you know, whenever you know this hexagonal shape and you can bounce it, it's got a lot of weight to it. It's usually a sapphire. Huh, I like that golden pattern. Huh. Yeah, let's check some of these others. Now, mainly all of these are translucent. Um, that's the light passing through. It may not be transparent to the level of what I just held up, but most are. Oh, wait. This one needs to be cut, probably. There's a face of crystalline material right there. Interesting. So... Uh, I use these for magic, but if you go out to Arizona or something, you know, magic, you know, yeah, magic, yeah, I gotta watch what I say. Yeah, so, if you go to Arizona or somewhere, uh, you probably know a sapphire like this, eh, 20 bucks or 50 bucks or something, but something like this, huh? I can only guesstimate from what I've seen, but probably about 10,000 to 5,000. Probably. Yeah, I don't want to sell this at a rock shop. Probably you could get it for about, you could get it in a mining bucket. Uh, a very expensive one, probably. It's, who knows? But I don't assign prices to the gems. Like I said, I use mine to help me pray and focus and get this house, you know, with the holy energy around it and stuff. So, alrighty. That's my mining pile. It's raining. And this is my big bin. And uh, what I'll do usually is toss stuff in there after I look through this pile kind of thorough. All right, I'll go ahead and upload this up.